You are the angels. And you have the tools. And this is the time. And there's only one of us here. And from our many and varied perspectives, I believe that we are like the geese carrying one another in our flock to that point of convergence. The ancients called the shift of the ages because we love and care about one another that much. And I believe that we each do it in the way that we know how to the best of our ability in that moment. And it is this kind of change in our thinking that brings about the kind of world that I choose to live in for our children to live in. And I believe it is accessible. It's within reach. It can happen in a heartbeat if we believe that that is possible. And we must believe that first in the belief transcends the mental, logical process. We must feel that that is possible. So as you witness the challenges of life and you find yourself responding the way that we respond to the challenges of life, I'll invite you to go back to the five tenets of compassion left by the Essenes. And as your relationships show you yourself in yourselves in many, many ways, and you find yourself asking, what is it this relationship is showing me? Go back to those mysteries, the mirrors of relationship. And it won't take long before you find that you no longer need to go to those things because you've embodied those tenets and you've embodied those codes. And one day you'll look around and your world will look very different to you. And you may be hard pressed to put a time or a day on when that happens. You'll just know that somehow something powerfully, powerfully different is occurring within your body. And as that happens, not when, not if, as that happens to you, bless you in that moment. Blessings of knowledge, wisdom, and compassion. Perhaps one of the greatest gifts left to us today through the traditions of the ancient Essenes is the gift of a verbal code allowing us the opportunity to move gracefully through the experiences of life that have hurt us the most. This gift, uh, relatively obscure in, uh, in ancient texts and seen frequently in modern texts and perhaps not understood, is known as the gift of the blessing. Through the gift of blessing, we're asked to acknowledge for the possibility that without exception, every event that unfolds in our world, in our lives, in our presence, is an event that has originated from a single source of all that may be. We're asked to allow for the possibility that there is one source for all that we may ever know in our lives. And in that possibility, anything that follows, regardless of how joyous or how painful, it must be part of the one. It must be part of that source of all that is. When we bless an event that has hurt us or an individual that has caused us pain or grief, what we're saying in that moment is that we acknowledge the divine or the sacred nature of that which has unfolded and it is divine and sacred by being virtue of part of the one. I'm often asked, how is it? How is it that we're expected to bless something that has hurt us uh, tremendously in life? And perhaps the best way for me to answer that is to describe to you the process as I witness the process. Um, for me, when I have had the opportunity, and it is an opportunity, to witness an event, uh, perhaps something in my life, or perhaps my life has been present uh, while an event has unfolded in, in the life of another. When I've had the opportunity to witness these things, 
and I hear of the pain and the, and the misery and the suffering, what I find myself doing is taking a deep breath and allowing for the possibility that although I may not understand what has just occurred, it is part of the one. It is part of the single source of all it is. It is sacred in nature. That understanding then allows me to remove myself in a sense. And as I witness the events before me, uh, whether it's uh, wartime footage on the six o'clock news or, uh, or the, the killing uh, of animals um, in a game reserve in, uh, in southern Africa without need to kill those animals, and I feel that emotion, is the blessing that allows me to distance myself just a little bit and from that to release the charge that I'm feeling in my body. As I say, bless the hunters that are taking the lives of those animals. What happens for me is the entire scene almost slows uh, without sound into, uh, uh, into an almost surrealistic animation. And as I witness the events before me from that perspective and I say, bless those men in what they do so that they know themselves in that way, bless the animals for what has occurred to them and bless me in the witnessing. And I say it again, and I say it again, and I say it again. And what begins to happen is that through the blessing, which does not condone or consent or necessarily agree with what has occurred, blessing isn't, isn't agreement. Blessing simply acknowledges that what I have witnessed is part of the creative forces responsible for this world, and as such, that which I have witnessed is divine in nature. It is sacred, and I have just been present in a sacred act. From my perspective uh, and through the traditions of the Essenes, as we say the words, there's a magic that occurs in blessing that which has hurt us the most. There's, there's a power. It takes a very powerful being to bless that which is hurt rather than lash out at that which has hurt us. And it is in that power that we find our highest levels of mastery as we find ourselves allowing for great possibilities of experience without becoming emotionally ensnared in the charge of what those, those possibilities have offered. The gift of the blessing is our promise. It was given to us long, long ago that regardless of what we experience in our lives in this world, that each of us has the opportunity to return to our source whole, intact, and with grace as we have known ourselves in this world and carry the benefit of that knowing to our next experience.